As a boat approached the canal traveling south on the Catawba River, the patroon, or river boat pilot, first saw the diversion dam. The dam consisted of piles of loose stone on the river bottom. The dam projected from the bank at roughly 40 degrees, and did not completely cross the river. It was designed simply to keep a sufficient water supply flowing through the canal when the river was low and to maintain an area of calm water to prevent boats from being swept into the shoals during floods. At several points along its path, the canal crossed natural streams flowing toward the river. To avoid damage to the fragile canal bed, the streams were channeled under the canal through culverts. This arch culvert consisted of a wing wall on the outside of both canal banks and arched stone channel that passed under the canal bed through which the stream flowed. Portions of both the entrance and exit arch and walls still remain. If you look closely between them you can see the foundation stones of the arch channel which carried water under the canal bed. It is this upper section of the canal that has best survived periodic flooding intact. The canal bed is not always straight but curves in several places to follow the contour of a natural hill. By cutting into the hill along a constant level and transferring the earth to the outer bank, a minimum of excavation and earth moving was necessary. 
The extreme upper part of the canal was cut straight across level land, the greatest difficulty being the bed rock which was encountered. This was blasted out, some of it being used in canal construction. The rock is visible in places along the upper part of the canal bed often showing holes which were drilled by hand for blasting. In building the canal all trees and plant growth were removed and excavations were carried out by hand or with mules and drag lines. Stumps were removed with a variety of machines common at the time. Each bank was given a core of clay, which was resistant to leaking. Archaeologists have found this clay layer still intact in this area. Near its halfway point, the canal passed the mill complex built by William Richardson Davy around 1810. This mill sawed lumber and ground grain, both by use of water power. A waste weir at the entrance to the complex regulated the level of water in the canal. The weir, a stone wall with spillway at the highest safe water level, kept excess water in the complex from damaging the mill area. Under the weir can still be seen the outflow arch of a culvert which carried a small stream under the canal bed. The upstream arch has been destroyed by flooding. A basin at the front of the complex allowed boats to pull to the side to load lumber and meal. A flume directed water from the canal to operate the mill wheel, while the canal itself passed between a pair of retaining walls designed to protect the foundation of the mill from being damaged by the flowing water. <laughs>